Are you ready to learn about a thought-provoking book? Alternatives to Capitalism Proposals for a Democratic Economy will challenge your perspectives on economic systems. Firstly, the authors argue that capitalism is a flawed system that perpetuates inequality and exploitation. Hence, they propose an alternative model called Participatory Economics or Paracon. Paracon is all about democratic decision-making and social justice. The authors believe that workers should have decision-making power over operations, including production, pricing, and investment. This model would lead to more equitable distribution of wealth and resources and prioritize social welfare over profit maximization. For example, the model proposes work councils that would manage firm operations and negotiate with other councils for resource allocation. The authors acknowledge that Paracon has faced criticism, hence the author discuss criticism that participatory economic may have be too utopian or idealistic, arguing that it is grounded in practical experiences of workers and community control in both capitalist and socialist contexts. The authors also suggest several solutions to its potential weaknesses, including the use of computer-based planning to aid in decision-making and coordination, the use of incentives to encourage efficiency and the establishment of institutions to facilitate coordination between firms and council. They argue that the model has several strengths, including its emphasis on democratic decision-making, its focus on meeting social needs rather than profit, and its potential for reducing inequalities. Next, moving to the defense of participatory economics. The main goal of participatory economics is to have a decentralized and more democratic economy. Now, how does this help? The authors strongly believe that participatory economics can face and address problems of capitalism, such as unemployment and environmental degeneration, while not being affected by the influences of socialism. Next, it is more feasible and sustainable to implement para-econs instead of capitalism or centralized socialism as it eliminates profit-seeking and bureaucracy. Alright, so alternatives to capitalism are anchored or branched out into two main ideas, real utopias that attempt to embody or represent ideals outside of legal sector while still being practical to the effectiveness of issues and also its sustainability and also socialism, which essentially just the coexistence of different systems in one society. So there are three types of structure. We have capitalism that produces things or resources that are privately owned. And we have statism, the means of production that are owned by the state. And socialism, that is production that are socially owned through the allocation of resources that is accomplished through social power. In terms of strategic logics of transformation, there are also three types that characterize anti-capitalism, which is ruptural transformation, the idea that creating new institutes outside of the legal sector as a declaration of war. And there's also interstitial transformation, the building of new forms of social empowerment that do not pose an immediate threat. So also in terms of coexistence, and there is symbiotic transformation, the idea that there are multiple institutional equilibria within capitalism. It is created to help one another and this is associated with social democracy. In their attempt after the transitioning from the current capitalist economic system into a more participatory economic system, the two authors present the theories and characteristics surrounding capitalism. The first theory that they highlighted was the metaphor of economic system as organism versus ecological. Organisms, in this case, are businesses and the people, where ecological is the economic system itself. Amelioration is the second concept that they presented, and it is the reformation of the economic system itself. The authors admitted that reformation is not the proper procedure to change the whole system, but it does pave the way for a transitional change. The final theory presented is the idea of core values and critical institutions. Critical institutions is a more rigid approach that details the account of finances, whereas core values retain the basic values with the vision of innovation. As for the characteristics of capitalism, it's identified in two traits. Incentives, which is the driving force of society to progress with the main goal of gaining wealth, and status quo that upholds the economical standard of society. On this final chapter, which is the final thought, the author argues about their perspective with five several questions. Those questions are, first, 
What is wrong with the market? Second, but is there anything actually desirable about the markets? Third, the hidden infusion of marketish process within a participatory economy, the problem of hybrids. Fourth, mathematical model of complex system. And the fifth, the ultimate need for system rupture. With five different questions, concluding in some differences and similarities on the arguments, they argue over the approaches that they prefer on handling the types of problems and conflict that have arisen over a certain period of time. Both of their arguments consist of opinions and stated facts that would give readers a wider range of perspective over the situation. The authors provide a clear and detailed explanation of each model, as well as critiques of their limitations. I think that's all for our presentation. Thank you.